my name is Elizabeth Adams, and to begin, I would like to welcome you all to my second workshop on childhood obesity. Uh, this one is entitled, The Skinny on Food Labels, How to Put Them to Work for You and Your Family. Um, I want to thank those of you who joined me uh, in my previous workshop entitled, Healthy Desserts Exist, and for, any, the, for those of you who are new, I'd like to welcome you as well. Uh, to start, I would like to begin with giving a brief overview of what we discussed in my previous workshop. Um, in the beginning, I first provided an overview of childhood obesity in terms of what it is and how we medically uh, define it and classify it, as well as um, some of the dangers that childhood obesity presents. We also looked at the nutritional requirements for children as well as how we can teach our children about these requirements with the concept of sometimes foods versus any type of foods, uh, so that kids can grow to have a healthy relationship with food. And finally, I concluded with a short demonstration on how to incorporate an any time food such as bananas into a fun, healthy, uh, low-cal, low-fat dessert um, by dipping the bananas in chocolate and walnuts. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to delve into the topic of how, how we as parents can distinguish between those sometimes foods and anytime foods a little bit more. Uh, specifically, we're going to use a very powerful tool that will allow us to do that, and that is the food label. And by the end of the presentation, I would like you all to be able to walk away feeling confident that you know how to make healthy, informed decisions um, by analyzing nutrition facts. So, to start, by, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with reading and analyzing nutrition labels? So, if there are a number of you, it looks like there's some of you that maybe want some extra hints on this. So, why don't we go ahead and get started? The first question is, what is a food label? Well, to start, a uh, nutrition facts label is a label that's found on either the side or the back panel of a food container. and um, it's basically on almost all processed foods, and it's required by the FDA's Nutrition Labeling and Education Act of 1990. The nutrients that are mandatory to be included on this nutrition facts label are included because they uh, illustrate the relationship to uh, current health problems. And also, the order in which those mandatory nutrients appear on the label is a reflection of their public health significance. So what does a nutrition uh, facts label include? Well, as you can see from this picture here, there are basically numerous sections that it can be broken down to. Um, the first section is at the very top, the blue right there, and that's gonna be your serving size and your serving per container. Below that, you have your calorie information and um, your calories from fat. Below this includes a section of nutrients to limit, such as your, your fat, your saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium. And uh, further below that, there is um, a section that outlines the nutrients you want to make sure you and your family are getting enough of. And that's gonna include things like dietary fiber, your minerals of calcium and iron, as well as vitamins A and C. Then um, on the right-hand side, there's the percent daily values, or percent DB. And, um, and at the very bottom of the label in orange there is the last section, which is a footnote basically outlining the, um, the calories per gram that each macronutrient provides. Um, so I also want to point out just a quick note about the percent DB, or percent daily value. That is, it represents the recommended daily allowances or the amount of the specific nutrient that you should be getting in a day. And these are based on adult value. So that's something to keep in mind when we're looking at how much kids should be getting. Um, because although adults and kids' requirements are more or less very similar, there are going to be uh, some differences depending on the age of the child and their activity level. For example, most percent daily values for adults are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Uh, and we want to keep in mind that most children that are around four to five years old or moderately active are only going to need about 1,400 calories. Um, therefore, the only place you're really going to see 
see a percent DV that specifically applies to young children are on food packaging labels that are for foods specifically for that age group. Um, and we'll kind of go into this with a, an example further on. Okay, so that's kind of a lot of information and it can be confusing about where we want to begin. So here I kind of have a step-by-step -step sort of with how you should go about um, <coughs> analyzing your label, where you should begin. So at the very top, as I, I think I mentioned that before, that's going to be where you want to begin because that's the serving size amount. And that serving size <coughs> is crucial because that information is going to basically impact the rest of the calculations you're going to be doing uh, for the rest of the uh, nutrients. And then basically what you're going to do is work your way down and um, go from there. But I do have an outline of a little bit more detail of what to do, a step-by-step -step approach. So, um, step one, first you want to check the serving sizes. Uh, because as I mentioned before, this information will impact all the rest of your calculations. Uh, from the label. So it's very important that this is not skipped. There's also a key number of questions that you're going to want to ask yourself while you're analyzing. And I have those outlined here. First is, what is the serving size? How many servings are in the container? How many calories are in a single serving? And how many servings am I eating? Because if you're going to eat more than one, then you want to make sure that you're multiplying the uh, gram or milligram weight of the nutrient by the number of servings you are having. Okay. So step number two, and at this point, this is where you're going to check the percent daily values. And I call the 520 rule, it's what you're going to want to look for. Um, ask yourself, is, um, does this item or this food item contain 5% or less dB of the nutrient? Does it contain 20% or more dB? And is this nutrient something that I want to limit or that I want to ensure me and my family are getting enough of? Um, and for this question, this last one, number three, that's where you're going to want to think about the 520 rule, uh, which basically states that if a food contains less than or equal to 5% of the DV, then that food is not considered to be a good source of that particular nutrient. So you're going to want to see the 5% DV on those <laughs> items that you want to limit but not on those that you want to ensure you're getting enough of. In contrast, the 20% uh, the uh, dB um, is, uh, would mean that that particular nutrient, or that food, excuse me, is a good source of that nutrient. So the 20% dB is something you're going to want to see for nutrients that you need to get enough of, like dietary fiber and calcium and things like that but you would not want to see this on nutrients you want to limit, like sodium or cholesterol. Okay, so finally at step three. Um, at this point, you want to compare the percent daily value to what you and your family need, so you can decide whether this particular food item is a good choice for you and your family. Generally speaking, things to limit would include the saturated fat, the trans fat, trans fat, you want to avoid those altogether as much as possible, and then cholesterol and sodium. Um, things to ensure that you and your family are getting enough of would include dietary fiber, vitamins A and C, as well as the minerals calcium and iron. And I have an asterisk next to the calcium and iron um, because if you remember from my previous workshop, uh, these are the nutrients that um, children need uh, in large quantities because their bodies are rapidly growing and building bone. Um, and then I also want to point out another note just when it comes to young children, it's very important that we're not limiting their fat because that is crucial for adequate growth and development. Um, okay, so overall there are going to be some differences uh, for nutrition fact labels on our younger, for our, the foods designed for our younger children. And basically in all infants and children, it is important that, as I said before, we don't want to limit their, uh, their overall fat intake as fat during this age group is critical for their uh, adequate growth and development. But also on this slide, you can see that there's actual physical differences on the nutrition fast label in terms of how it's set up. You can see that for children less than two, except for on infant formulas, you're not going to see the label carrying information on saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, 
monounsaturated fat, cholesterol, or calories from fat, or even calories from saturated fat. Uh, in addition, there's not going to be a percent daily value except for the percent DV for protein and for the vitamins and minerals. And so the percent DV that is provided for the protein and vitamins and minerals, those are going to be specific to that age group of less than two years old. So I have an example of a label for uh, a food that would be intended for a child less than four. And this sort of outlines some of these uh, key differences. Here, although cholesterol and fat are listed, you can see there is no percent DV for them. And there's also no percent DV for sodium, potassium, total carbohydrate, dietary or dietary fiber. And also the percent DV for daily value that is listed there at the bottom, uh, those are gonna be specific to this particular age group, children less than four. So this is just something you wanna keep in mind um, if you do have children that are in the younger age category. Okay, so let's try it. Now that we have a basic understanding of the step-by-step -step process for analyzing food labels, let's go ahead and try I passed out a nutrition label. So um, there's not enough to go around. You can just go ahead and share. And what I'm going to have you do is take a look at that and see if you can answer these questions that I have. So the first question, how many calories are in one serving of this particular food item? 170. One seventy. Yes, one seventy. That's correct. I think that's right. That is the majority. Number two. How many servings per container are there? Two. two. Correct. Two. Yes. Number three. Calculate how much fat uh, in grams is in the entire container. Twenty-two grams. Excellent. So I heard twenty-two. So we're taking the eleven grams and multiplying it by the two servings per container to get twenty-two grams. Uh, and is this food a good source of dietary fiber? No. 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 And that's right, because it's less than the 5%. Excellent. So, looks like you guys are all pros. Now let's take a quick quiz. Uh, state whether the following uh, statements are true or false. The serving size listed on the top of the nutrition facts label is not important when analyzing the nutrition facts of the food. False. false. Correct. The 520 rule refers to the fact that foods containing 5% daily value of a particular nutrient are considered to be a poor source of that nutrient, whereas those containing 20% daily value are said to be a good source of that nutrient. True. True. Great. And finally, the last one, foods to avoid include calcium and iron, especially in young children. All Great, that's fine. Okay, so thank you. I hope that I provided you with the tools and information you need to go and analyze your nutrition facts labels, and I thank you all for being a great audience. Any questions?